So hello folks, this is Garth at GW Leathercraft, and today I'm making a belt pouch. This is a, and this has no, this is a belt pouch, it's made out of Kodiak leather, which is, uh, this is the side leather, so this is uh, from Tandy, this is four, and a, four to five ounce, uh, chrome tan, uh, oil, I think it's chrome tanned, but it has uh, it's very oily. Good for uh, bags and stuff outside that's going to see some weather because it's already oiled. Now, um, this is a, a belt pouch, a pattern that I made. This has um, uh, three parts. It has the the back and the flap, and it has the front, which is the same. And it has the belt, um, the belt loop, for lack of a better word. Um, I'm not sure that it's a loop, but it's it where the belt goes anyway. Um, so it's just you you cut it out, uh, you mark you you I use I usually glue it together or use uh, tape whichever to, to get the seams to lay flat and everything then I sew it and and um, there's no edge beveling it, it, it turn I turn it after it's sewn so it's a turn inside out type of pouch and um, and it just the closure is just a, a loop a loop with a, a antler tip it's kind of a, a rustic kind of a pouch, uh, old-fashioned, I've heard some people say, uh, simple belt pouch. Uh, some people like them for when they're collecting arrowheads along the beach or on along the shore or in the woods. They like them for uh, fire kits or carrying uh, a tinder, well, like tinder for a fire kit or maybe a forage pouch, although it's not real big. It's it's not a huge pouch, and it's it's just um, uh, um, it's just one of them things. Sometimes you want a little belt pouch, I guess. Bushcrafters, um, reenactors, uh, buckskinners, um, I guess those are predominantly. The people that would want this, but you know, it anybody really. Um, now, I am using a gel pen here, and I said in one of my other videos that I don't use them, but I do for this because I need the extra ink so it'll show up. This is the back side of the leather, as you can see, it would be kind of hard to see it on the front. So that, I just trace that around, that's that one pattern, and, and that's just Bristol board. Um, it's not a very good pattern, but it's, uh, or I should say it's not a very durable pattern. Uh, the pattern quality is fine, but it's, um, it's one of those things, if you don't get around to making a better pattern, you make do with the old original pattern and that's what this is. Well actually I'm not sure if it's the original pattern but it's one made off the original pattern. Now anybody knows that chrome tan is not the easiest thing to cut but you have a good sharp knife and you hold it a little bit that worked pretty good. I didn't mean to show off for the camera but apparently I did. So we're just going to cut around this. Now there is a half inch seam allowance on the pattern and that gives me plenty. I can use, I usually use glue because well, I guess the reason I'm using glue right now is because I'm out of tape. But where it's a round thing, you have to make so many little bits of tape that the glue is just easier. 
and I guess I should say contact cement because that's what it is. And that is the front piece. Now, I'm not going to make you watch the other pieces. As you saw with the pattern, I'll hold it up again, the loop three by four, that's inches. So I've got to make another, I've got to make a loop that's just measured, there's no pattern. And um, I'll cut that out and I'll get back to you. So we're back. I've got the pieces cut out. And I just wanted to say this. Um, this is, uh, I believe, the brown color Kodiak leather, um, and I didn't know if you noticed that there was a, I don't know if somebody spilt uh, vanilla milkshake on it or what, but there was some spots on it that I didn't notice. I, I didn't pick out the leather, I sh had it shipped in and this is what I found. And um, uh, I'm an old man, I don't spill vanilla milkshakes anymore, but uh, that's what it looks like. Um, I tried to avoid it on the main body. Uh, I don't think that's anything, but uh, there was a little bit on the belt loop, but that won't show because it goes like that. And I thought I'd bring you back and show you just what they look like. These are the two. When you're sewing them, of course, back to front, front to back, and they lay like that. The first thing you do, though, is you put the belt loop on, just like that. Now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna glue it and in place and um, or I'll probably use tape actually for this piece and um, and then then I'm gonna sew it and once that's sewn um, then I'll bring you back and show you okay so we're back and I've got the belt loop sewn on and. Having a senior's moment. Okay, so for the loop, you could do it either way, but I put the antler tip on the on the flap, and uh, I put the loop on the bag. Um, this antler tip, the one I got off eBay, I got a bunch of them at the time. Um, I'm using oblong, or I guess this is an oval punch, um, just because I got two pieces of thong going through it, lace, whatever you want to call it. Um, I need the extra room. And this one here, I want the. Um, antler tip to lie close to the bag. I don't want it stuck off like a sore thumb. So, if I could find it. Oh my god. Oh, I don't know. There it is. Did you ever notice that when you when you're looking for something it's always in the last place you look? Yeah. So anyway, so I just do that about there. And I put two so it lies close. Okay, that is that. Yeah. So now we have to prepare for the glue. So this is a tool I made. It's just a three square file or four, four square and in a file handle I bent it, round, cut it off, rounded the corner and it just takes the, the just roughs up that surface. I don't believe the glue would stick terribly well because the leather is so oily, but it sticks long enough to 
to um, get the job done. Um, I have tried to do it without sticking it down and it is just not a good way to go. The uh, Because the leather is stretchy it just pushes ahead of the needle sewing machine of course. I don't know how it would do with hand stitching. You might be able to do it hand stitching but um, the little bit of time it takes to put some glue on it and like I said earlier the I'm running short of of uh, tape right now but the, the glue works around the corner better get that on there without dripping it all over it. That would be very nice. So now like I said earlier there's a half inch seam allowance so the um, I have a fair amount to come and go on. When um, When the seam is completed, and before I turn it around, and inside out, right side out, whatever, um, I, uh, I cut some of that seam allowance off, and um, down to about a quarter of an inch, and then um, I'm not a seamstress. I don't know what those that's called when you cut into the corner almost to the seam but whatever it is that's what I do and that's of course makes the court makes it turn better I'll show you that and then you can look it up at your leisure Now this could be laced. I've never done that. Never made one like and laced it around the edge, but it certainly could be. So anyway, I'm going to let that dry a little. Put it together. I'm going to mark it in a half an inch from the edge with the scratch out with the uh, dividers. I'm going to sew it and then I'll come back. Okay. Well, we're back. It's sewn, ready for trimming. Cutting this extra off just makes it turn easier and gives you a less bulky seam is really all it does. It's not necessary once you get the seam done, but it is helpful during the sewing process. This is what I was talking about before. My head out of the way. You only need to do it on the corners. You don't, and you're very careful not to go quite up to your stitches because you don't want to cut them. But just doing that, and that'll turn a lot easier. So, anyway, there's that. Now, if I had if anybody is going to try to do what I do, you can leave off the part, the disorganized part, and the not being able to find anything part. You don't need to copy that. Anyway, so there is that part. Um,
Anyway, I'm just looking for some the right size lace is what I'm trying to find. I don't know. I can't, uh, well, actually, I might be able to fit this stuff through there. I just forget what I used the last time. Oh, yeah, that's no problem at all. Okay, we'll use this then. Actually, we'll try that. Maybe that, I don't think that'll go through there. Oh. It will. Okay, well, we'll use that then. It's a little bit wide. That's just a square knot for any of you Boy Scouts out there. Okay, that's that on there. And I get another piece of this stuff here. For the bag loop, or the, the loop. Uh, I leave this one long, and I put a... knot in it like that and then I, I try it but I've got to get it turned inside well yeah I'm going to turn it inside out first which I guess we'll do now and this leather has pull up quality so it shows when you make a crease in it but when you're doing this you think oh my god I made it too small but no that's you get it out there it's the right size something and push that out. Uh, preferably something that ain't going to poke a hole through it. Like I said, it was four or five ounce, a little bit stiff. Well, I shouldn't say stiff, but just the sheer thickness of it makes it just a little bit contrary. It makes a great pouch when you're done. And that could stand a little more work, but it's not bad the way it is. So. thread here and uh, that's the easy way to get that out through that hole say easy I said easy no 
Nothing's ever easy. Okay, well, let's try it this way. Well, this will be any easier or not. One in through. it there. If I had that now. <clears throat> that is the poach. And I may choose to shorten that lace a little. It just depends. If you want to be able to fill it, you know, like stuff it, well then you would want a longer lace. If you want it to be a little bit smaller and compact, you would want a shorter lace. Depends on what you're putting in it. That's not for me to say, but I'd rather, uh, I, th I think, have it a little shorter. So I'll do that. Um, anyway, that is the the um, the belt pouch made from Kodiak leather, and uh, always available on my website and um, gwleathercraft.net. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.